Holden, very important, from Keep Prison Single Sex. In 1823, the Jails Act was passed and became law. At page 7, line 10, it states, The male and female prisoners shall be confined in separate buildings or parts of the prison so as to prevent them from seeing or conversing with each other. Wise words indeed. 200 years later, where are we? Well, the material reality and importance of sex to the criminal justice system has seemingly been forgotten. Suspects and convicted offenders are recorded in police data to reflect the sex that they would like to be, not the sex that they are. Male offenders, men, are now routinely approved to be held in the female estate alongside women who are some of the most vulnerable, neglected and overlooked members of society. Rapists, murderers, child sex offenders, torturers, the most violent and difficult to manage, those with intact and fully functioning male genitalia. This is a disgrace and an outrage. Elizabeth Fry and other women had worked for 10 years for prison reform, including for the complete segregation of the sexes. Well, 200 years later, here we are again, largely women and some men standing outside Parliament, the self-same issue. There are problems south of the border too. England and Wales are far from perfect, but today this is about this shameful situation in Scotland. Because of the work of women, the extent of institutional capture of the Scottish Prison Service by Scottish Trans Alliance is known. The 2014 Scottish Prison Service policy that permits men to be housed in the female estate with women was written by and is emblazoned with the logo of Scottish Trans Alliance. The abuse, the abuse of female prisoners was a crucial step to create policy precedent that could be rolled out to ensure that men could have access to women's single services in other sectors. The Scottish Prison Service simply allowed this to happen. Today, Scottish Trans Alliance and the Equality Network are only able to exist because of Scottish Government funding. They still have undue influence in Parliament. They are still advising your democratically elected representatives. Prior to the 2014 policy, in 2011, biological sex had been erased from the Scottish prison rules. The piece of legislation that informs all prison policy and practice in Scotland. The prison rules set out the circumstances for allocation, searching and other procedures in prison where sex is important. Whilst previous versions have specified that these should take place according to sex, the 2011 version states that searching is to take place on a same gender basis. Compulsory tests for drugs and alcohol are to be administered by those of the same gender as the prisoner. Categorisation of prisoners and subsequent allocation is according to gender. By removing sex and replacing it with gender, the rules set in place the legislative context that doesn't merely justify, rather it mandates that subsequent prison policy also refers to gender and not to sex. What was the justification for such a radical change? I asked for copies of all reports and minutes of meetings where this had been discussed. I received back from the Scottish Prison Service a single page of A4 where it was simply written that this would be, and I quote, a more appropriate classification given transgender issues. Where 
was the scrutiny? Where was the debate? Why was Parliament not doing its job? Justice Secretary from 2007 to 2014 describes being hoodwinked and that this change to legislation and the 2014 policy were pushed through under the radar. He says that he simply did not know. Now, it's easy to place the burden of responsibility for this mess on Kenny and to blame him, but to do so would be unfair and unwise. The Denton's Playbook is the document that reveals the tactics of trans lobbyists and sets out how to get policy and legislation changed under the radar without proper scrutiny and on the quiet. Where changes can be pushed through with as close to zero consultation or publicity as possible, this is seen as a success. And this is what happened in 2011 and 2014. So no, I won't blame Kenny, and believe me, he has fully stepped up in the fight for the sex-based rights of women throughout the criminal justice system, both here in Scotland and south of the border. But I will speak to every single MSP standing here with us, and to every MSP too busy or too unconcerned to pay this issue the attention it requires. You know now, I and others here have done that work for you, so do your job. Yes.